good evening and welcome to Holy Family Parish and the celebration of the Vigil Mass for Pentecost. Our celebrant is Father Ed. This Mass will be live streamed and archived on our Holy Family webpage for future viewing. For those viewing our Mass from home, please click on the Welcome tab to view our bulletin. Paper copies are available in the boxes mounted outside the parish office. We have some announcements. Festival volunteer sign up has begun online or by using the form in the bulletin. Many volunteers are needed to make this festival possible. No prior experience needed. Volunteering is a great way to spend time with friends and to meet new people. Please consider signing up for a shift or two. If you placed a spirit wear order, please pick it up at the parish office during our regular business hours. Don't miss your chance to be entered into the next appreciation drawing, which will be held this Wednesday, June 8th. Please remember that you must turn in at least $40 worth of tickets, one full sheet at one time, to qualify for the appreciation drawings. Additional tickets are available in the vestibule and at the parish office. Thank you for your support. Please join us next Sunday, June 12th, to celebrate the 40th anniversary of ordination for Father Evans and Father Schwett at the 1130 Mass in the newly renovated church. There will be a reception following the Mass in the cafeteria. This will be Father Schwett's last scheduled weekend Mass before he officially retires on June 14th. Father Ed will be in the cafeteria after all Masses that weekend if you would like to stop by and say farewell. Please note that all other weekend Masses, the 4.30 Vigil, 7.30 and 9.30 a.m. Masses will still be held in the chapel. There will not be overflow seating in the cafeteria for the 9.30 Mass next Sunday. Dining to donate is back Please support our Altar and Rosary Society this Tuesday, June 7th at Applebee's in Middleburg Heights. Both dine-in and carry-out orders will qualify. Just bring your flyer from the bulletin or use the code listed to order online. We also have a supply of Applebee's gift cards for purchase at the parish office. Please join us in the prayer. For holy family. Jesus, Jesus Mary, and Mary, and Mary, and Joseph, you are examples of love, purity, and faithfulness. Lead us to know and follow God's will as you did. Shepherd us to share our time, talents, and treasure. Heavenly Father, guide us to have faith, courage, and obedience like your Son. Holy Spirit, giver of gifts, Please open our hearts to see Jesus in others and show joy and kindness every day. We ask you, Lord, to bless us and place your hand upon our holy family parish. Amen. Please stand. Oh 
afternoon, everyone. I invite you to look about you, and if you do not know your neighbor around you, please introduce yourself to them and welcome them to today's Mass. Gathered as a parish family, we begin our celebration this Pentecost in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. As we gather together to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first call to mind our sins and ask our Heavenly Father for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to our everlasting life. Amen. God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the good. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church and every people and every nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that is that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Fill now once more the hearts of all your believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, as one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The readings will be taken from the uh, day of Pentecost, not the vigil. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. 
At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heirs of God 
and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him, so that we may be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Spirit come, and from your celestial home, shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor, come, source of all our store, come within our bosom shine. You of comforters the best, you the soul's most welcome guest, Sweet refreshment here below. In our labors rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within your hearts of yours, and our inmost being filled. Where
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you shall forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. And happy birthday. You know why it's happy birthday? It's the birthday of the church. Catechism, you got it, you remember. That's that's good. Yeah, it's, it's called the birthday of the church, the descending of the Holy Spirit. And uh, there were a lot of people that were gathered in Jerusalem because a lot of our feasts follow the Jewish uh, feasts and customs of the Shavuot. Uh, it's 50 days or seven weeks after the Passover. And the Shavuot is celebrated in a harvest celebration commemorating God's provision and sustenance for his people. And Shavuot shares two important characteristics with the holidays or Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. All three holidays involved a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. That's why there were a lot of people gathered there when Paul, uh, I mean, uh, when the disciples came out. All three holidays involved the first fruit offerings of the temple. There was one in the spring, late spring, and one of the harvest festival in the fall. And like I said, a lot of our feasts that we celebrate uh, are in connection with the Jewish feasts and holidays. And um, what happened here? There it is on the other side. Can't wait till we get into the church. <laughs> Shavuot in the New Testament, the giving of the gospel, God's grace is revealed uh, through his living word. And when the Holy Spirit came to the disciples in tongues of flames, they began speaking other languages and they were preaching the gospel of Jesus to God-fearing Jews who had come for the feast in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven to observe Shavuot at the temple. So it's very wise that the Holy Spirit chose that moment to come down upon the apostles. Now, I hope you were reading um, or listening very keenly. I said from the Gospel of John, this is Easter Sunday night when Jesus appeared to them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you shall forgive are forgiven them <coughs> whose sins you retain are retained. That was Easter Sunday night, where Luke, in the Acts of the Apostles, spreads it out of 40 days to the Ascension and then the extra 10 days to Pentecost. And we fail to realize that we're not getting CNN news. Okay. Uh, he's both authors of John and the Acts of the Apostles are trying to speak of a mystery of the giving of the Holy Spirit. So uh, St. Luke in the Acts of the Apostles spreads it out again to 40 days to the Ascension and an extra 10 days to Pentecost to, to fit uh, his purpose you know, of writing the gospel. And again, we're, we're not listening to uh, daily news like we listen you know, to things today. Um, it was, it was much different in biblical times why they chose to write the way they did. Um, but how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Uh, of course, we're thinking of confirmation on Pentecost, okay? But we received the Holy Spirit when we were baptized. Now, many of us, when we were growing up, and I'm sure parents marveled as they watched their children start to grow up in what interest they have. And my interests were in science and mathematics and mechanics. It just came very natural to me. Okay, I aced all of my accounting courses at Chanel High School in Cleveland State. I didn't even have to go to class. Okay, I just showed up for the, you know, the uh, final exam and I got A's in all of my accounting. It came natural to me. 
And I think at our baptism, the Holy Spirit blesses those natural gifts that we have to use those gifts in love and service of one another. So uh, when I went into uh, accounting at Cleveland State, and I was very interested in mathematics and numbers and uh, using TurboTax, I would help the priests because uh, priests, cler all clergy file differently than you. We are employed federally, but we're self-employed for Social Security tax. We're called dual tax status. Actually, we have, we're taxed on the room and board, uh, the value of the room and board of the rectory, the full 15% of self-employment tax is called parsonage allowance. And a lot of guys didn't know that, and they came to me uh, and you know asked me, could you help me out? I've never done this before. And I said, well, get all your information together, you know, and the type of information that I needed. And they sat down with me. Uh, I remember Father Tom Woost, well, he wasn't Father Tom Woost at the time, uh, came and uh, he looked and he goes, now, are you sure it's going to be accurate? And I says, oh, I'm sure it's going to be accurate, but if you're audited, I'll be out of town. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, I hope there's no one from IRS sitting in, in the audience here. But, um, you know, mechanics. My dad would take me to Sohio. Remember Sohio? Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, uh, there was a mechanic. We had a 66 Chevy Caprice, 327, four-barrel Holly, power glide transmission. And uh, when he was tuning it up, he allowed me to stand next to him, and I watched him. And if you get a good mechanic, you know, they, they, everything's computer now, whatever the computer tells them. But he could put his hand on top of the carburetor, and when he's adjusting the air-fuel mixture for the carburetor, he can feel it on the engine when it was perfect. I mean, these guys were sharp. There was no computers to tell them what to do. And I would watch in fascination all the time. And one time it was winter time, and we lived in a double house on Henry Street. My Aunt Fran lived downstairs, and my parents and my sister and I were upstairs. And I was in my Aunt Fran's downstairs, and I took the cover off the thermostat. And I'm watching that glass thing with the mercury, <laughs> the bubble, going back and forth, and I'm looking at it and, you know, wondering. And I, I got a screwdriver, and I took it all apart, and it was in my hands. And then I put it back together again on the wall, and my Aunt Fran came back from Southgate AMP, and it was 50 degrees in the house, and she said, what happened to the thermostat? Well, my dad got involved, and I got a different kind of confirmation. <laughs> uh, but the Holy Spirit blesses those natural gifts that we have that just develop naturally in love and service of one another. My mother could crochet and knit beautiful doilies and afghans. My sister Karen had beautiful penmanship. Uh, when we were graduating from uh, Borromeo Seminary in theology, uh, one of the students uh, was able to script write really beautiful in color, you know, like the monks would do, you know, in making the texts of the scriptures. And he did all of our diplomas. And uh, he used that gift. Uh, to do that. The, the faculty came to him and knew he had that gift and said, well, would you use that gift to make the diplomas? And he did. So that's what the Holy Spirit does. He blesses those gifts that come to us naturally. And it's blessed to be of service to one another. And then when we get confirmation, okay, the Holy Spirit comes to us and we heard of the classic gifts of the Holy Spirit at confirmation that's taken from the various letters of Paul. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord, which really means awe of the Lord. If you are sinful, you cannot be in God's presence. Your sins are purged. That's what purgation is. Your sins are purged before you enter God's presence because he is all holy and nothing sinful can come before him. And, um, and again, those 
those gifts aren't like a funnel that's put into our head and the Holy Spirit pours those things down into our lives. We, we are given those gifts again to be of love and service to one another and to use those gifts in love and service. At ordination, when Bishop Hilla imposed hands on Father Evans and I at June 12, 1982, I knew that I did not like public speaking. My mother didn't like public speaking. Um, our adrenaline would pump up too much and you know, you'd be like this, shaking. I didn't like serving mass in front of the seminary community. One time, and you were in your cassock, thank God, because it, held your, it, it hid your knees from going like this. Okay, and I was holding the cruets for Father Tift, and he was my spiritual director. And I told him about that. I, I said, I, I hate how public speaking, but you got to do that when you're a priest. And uh, I was serving mass, and I'm holding the cruets, and the cruets were going like this. So right in front of the whole seminary community, he goes, "Boy, you are nervous, aren't you?" <laughs> and I, well, that was great, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I just did not like it. So when I knelt before Bishop Hilla, I bowed my head before he put his hands on my head in ordination. And I prayed, I said, Holy Spirit, you have brought me to this point in my life. I really believe that you have called me to this point of my life, but I have this. And how am I going to get through it? Well, it didn't come instantaneously. It came over time. Now you can't shut me up. Okay. But it came over a period of time where I calmed down when I started preaching. And, and again, uh, if you re saw on YouTube that every priest uh, has been assigned here, has anyone seen those talks? Well, go on our parish website, and uh, all the priests who have served here um, gives a little talk and I talked about hospital chaplaincy of how it blessed my ministry that you know to the sick and to the suffering and to especially to those who were dying and when I was here with Father Costello we had five priests if you remember mm -hmm. and I went to the register in the office and I had 250 funerals myself and then went seven years to uh, Fairview, three years to Lake Health, one year off to get my knee done. That's a joy. Mm -hmm. All that walking in the hospital, you know, going to patients' rooms and doing it twice a day, really, you know, trying to get the late admissions from the computer. I had access to the computer, and uh, I was able to do late rounds to catch people who just came in to keep on top of everything. But... Um, you know, uh, all, all of those things uh, I received, you know, from asking the Holy Spirit for guidance. And again, it didn't come instantaneously. And I remember at St. Christine's, uh, it was a Slovenian parish in Euclid, Ohio, on East 222nd Street, it's closed now. They had many communion rails where people would come up for communion and they would never come up all the way. I had a bowl, a patent, a bowl patent. And they would never come up all the way, and I had to go like this to reach them. And the bowl went down, and all the hosts slid down on the floor. And they're all looking and saying, oh, what's Father going to do? And I said, listen, if you want communion, you get on your knees and start picking <laughs> the hosts up, you know. But, you know... That was from nervous or nervousness and everything else, but uh, I've learned to use humor, really, to grow through things. You know, to laugh at yourself. You know, and use humor in a good way. You know, because you're not the big shot that you thought you were. You know, uh, you're a human being, and you have faults and failings, and you have weaknesses. But we pray to the Holy Spirit uh, for guidance in our life, and. I hope in your personal prayer life, I'm sure you pray to, uh, you ask for Mary's intercession, you pray to our Lord, um, you pray the standard prayers of the church, but how many of us pray to the Holy Spirit? You know, how many of us pray to the Holy Spirit for 
counsel and for guidance and all those things of the gifts that he has given to us. So let us celebrate our birthday today, the birthday of the church, the 12 fearing people, including Mary, who were locked behind doors out of fear for the people of being you know, exposed as Christians, that they came out raging tigers, okay? And they went into the public and they didn't fear anything, persecution, uh, being arrested. They went out and proclaimed God's word and God blessed us with St. Paul, that he took the word from Israel into the Roman world. And if he didn't do that, we wouldn't be sitting here because he included the Gentiles along with the Jews uh, to be saved by the Lord. So let us celebrate what our forebears have done for us, but uh, not to sit in neutral, to use our time and our gifts and our talents and the gifts that God has given to us, use it like it says in scripture. Don't put a candle under a candlestick under a bushel basket. Place it out where all can see. Don't hide it. Use it. And use it always in love and service because at this time of our country's history, we need a lot of love and service of others. So if you bow your head, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you kindly and give you his peace with his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you and you have a very nice day today. And if anyone would like to come over to my house next week when I retire to clean the house, I'll pay you, dub I'll pay you double. Okay. Where does dust come from, ladies? The house is sealed. And yet tons of dust is over everything, so I got my hands full. So, all right, God bless you, and have a wonderful day. And let us stand and profess our common faith. I believe. moved by the Holy Spirit, let us join our hearts and our souls together in asking the Father to hear our prayers. Our response to the petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis and all clergy may be filled with the Holy Spirit and proclaim the good news of Christ Jesus in word and action, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our military, police, and first responders may be strengthened as they promote peace, harmony, and respect among all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are in physical, mental, or emotional pain may be comforted by their faith and the kindness of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That we as a parish family may be filled with the love and joy of the Holy Spirit and be inspired to reach out to spread that joy 
and serve others, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, the Lord hear our prayer. That the intentions in our prayer book on the Father's Day envelopes and those in our hearts may be heard and answered by our merciful Lord. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord hear our prayer. That all who have died may be welcomed into God's heavenly kingdom. We pray in particular for Joseph A. Molesic, 104 years old, who was the father of Bishop Edward Molesic, Edward McNulty, Philip Lordo, and for whom this Mass is intended, Christine M. Dross. We pray to the Lord. And again, let us never forget the victims of the war in the Ukraine, especially the women and children who have been executed by Russian soldiers. And for the conversion of Vladimir Putin's soul, we pray to the Lord. And for those needs that we hold close to our hearts. God, our loving Father, hear our prayers presented to you with love and trust in your goodness, and we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who is our loving Father. And grant we pray, O Lord, that as you promised your Son, the Holy Spirit, may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mysteries of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery, that is your life, death, and resurrection, to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit on those you have made your adopted children, by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages on earth in the profession of one faith. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, 
Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they all acclaim. <laughs> and make holy. Therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the day he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. And he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. And once more he gave you thanks and handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. So humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love. With Francis, our Pope, Edward Molesic, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, her spouse Joseph with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheres to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. taught by our Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, protect us from all worry and anxiety, 
as we await the blessed hope at the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our risen Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer an appropriate sign of peace. away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Come be 
let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all of its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May his blessing come upon you, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the masses and they go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I hope I see you next week. God bless. Say, Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and help me pray. And to thou, the Prince of the Holy Ghost, by the power of God, cast into us Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl the world, Satan's dreaming of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you.